Inspired by Snowden's new book, I'm going to be demonstrating a bunch of products on my channel to show you how to live the modern privacy conscious lifestyle. And today I'm going to be showing off this little thing that I just bought and I'll explain what it is in a second, but I was inspired to purchase it after reading this tweet from Snowden. I wouldn't use Wi-Fi at home because global maps of every wireless access points unique ID, including yours, are free and constantly updated. I would use Ethernet, yes, Ethernet on a phone. I would deny network permissions to any app that doesn't need it using an app firewall. It seems Wi-Fi is a privacy and security threat, apparently because of these global maps of access points. I didn't know anything about this, so I did a bunch of research to learn more and it's kind of a rabbit hole. So a huge shout out to all the people on Twitter and Reddit who answered my comments. Upon Snowden's recommendation to use Ethernet, I went out and purchased a bunch of Ethernet cables and the first question I had was, do I connect my device directly to the modem or do I connect it to the router still? Because it seemed that if I wasn't using the router for its Wi-Fi capabilities, would I even need it at all? This may be a really simple question for a lot of you, so if it is, feel free to skip ahead. But for those of you who have not looked into this, I'm gonna explain briefly why this is a really important question. It can also be a bit confusing because they sometimes even combine the router and the modem into a single device. It turns out that although you can access the internet by either putting the ethernet directly into the modem or by putting it into the router first, you absolutely need to put the ethernet cable into the router. Essentially, your modem is not a security device. It is a data transfer device and it is completely exposed to the internet. Anyone poking your public IP address would have direct access to your computer's vulnerabilities like open ports or exploits, etc. And our devices often have these. Think about all of the bug updates that we get for the apps that we install on our phones, saying that they're patching over some sort of exploit there. So if you do connect directly to a modem, you're completely relying on your computer computer's own security measures to protect you. Whereas routers include firewalls that are a lot more sophisticated and essentially provide a barrier between your device and the outside world. Discovering all this was super helpful, but apparently had nothing to do with Snowden's tweet about these global maps of access points. In my next bit of research, I found out that maps like these exist. Let's zoom in. This is wiggle.net, but there are other sites that are similar. Every one of these purple dots is someone's Wi-Fi network, including personal hotspots created on phones to tether other devices. Because Wi-Fi networks are broadcast using radio waves, they can be read by anyone and maps like these can be created. These Wi-Fi transmissions can also be checked to see if they have an open connection or not. They can even be checked to see what devices are connected to each network. You can also see what kind of device itself is transmitting the signal. There are many public maps like this and they're constantly updated. You zoom in more closely and you can read every Wi-Fi network name, known as an SSID. There are other IDs listed on here as well, known as BSSIDs, and I'll explain in a bit what they are. On these databases, you can also search across time to see where and when networks and devices have been available in the past. So how do these maps get created? Wireless signals expand outwards in all directions from your access point. People's phones and computers survey Wi-Fi networks in the area constantly and automatically send data about the networks to Google for analysis. Your location is pinpointed in relation to all the Wi-Fi signals available around you. They're figuring out which Wi-Fi networks you're in range of to determine exactly where you are. And they're keeping a constantly updated database of every Wi-Fi access point in existence thanks to the data constantly being sent to them from our phones. And this is when you're not even connected to any of these Wi-Fi networks. Now is a good time to explain the difference between an SSID and a BSSID. It gets really complicated. <laughs> Basically, SSIDs, as mentioned, is the Wi-Fi network you create yourself. So it might be Bob's Wi-Fi home or something like that. Now the SSID could change at any time. You might rename it to Batcave. The SSID may have changed, but the actual device that is transmitting that network stays the same. And that's called a BSSID. It's also referred to as a MAC address. It gets pretty confusing. But the important thing to remember is that an SSID is a network name that you can change at any time, but the BSSID is the ID given to your actual device, and that always stays the same. All of your wireless transmitting devices, these include your wireless router or your phone, when you turn on the tethering capabilities, have one of these IDs, a BSSID. And if we go back to this map, we'll see that these device IDs are also on the map. 
Because SSIDs can change and BSSIDs stay the same, sites like Wiggle and Google catalog the network by the transmitter itself, so the BSSID that doesn't change. And they have a permanent record of when that device has ever been seen and exactly where it was at the time. Now, if you know someone's Wi-Fi network name, you could search for them in these public databases and then find their actual device's ID also. Let's talk about this in the context of your phone. Now, you may not know someone's phone hotspot name, for example, but if they're using an iPhone, iPhone uses certain defaults in naming people's hotspots. They create a network taking the name associated with the phone and then adding a s iPhone. For example, so-and-so's iPhone. You could take a guess at your friend Dimitri's hotspot name if he has an iPhone and he just went with the default settings. Search for Dimitri's iPhone. Then by narrowing down the locations, you could eventually find his actual hotspot. And you can also see his BSS ID. So even if Dimitri changes his hotspot name, you can still find him by looking up his actual device. In this case, his device is his phone. Now you have access to a permanent record of everywhere that Dimitri has used this phone as a hotspot in the past. You could also see if this hotspot has been broadcast frequently from any particular location. That location might be his work, or it might be his home, or it might be a bar that he frequents. You could start to figure out patterns of his movement by watching his location on these databases. You start to see how this is a major privacy concern and also a major security concern. So now let's get back to why Ethernet cables are superior. When you use Ethernet cables, you're not broadcasting anything via radio waves that could be intercepted by people or devices nearby. Furthermore, you can't get access to the list of the devices connected to that router unless you had physical access to the router yourself and were actually connected to it physically yourself. So to summarize all of that, and then we'll get back to explaining this little thing here, Creating and transmitting a Wi-Fi network is a really unsafe thing to do. It creates a lot of security and privacy concerns. It enables people to log your location at all times. It's not something that Snowden in particular recommends. Also, Wi-Fi drivers are usually pretty buggy, have a lot of vulnerabilities, and you don't want someone to be able to break into them because once they access your Wi-Fi network, they have access to all of your devices as well. So that brings me to this device here, which is a lightning to ethernet adapter. You can also get USB-C to Ethernet adapters, basically whatever plug your phone takes. This allows me to connect my phone directly to my router. And that may seem super weird to a lot of you because we're so used to our phones being super portable. We can take them anywhere. The idea of it having a hard line attached to something is probably very foreign. But I've been testing this product out for the past week and I'm going to let you know what I thought about it. First impression, it is a little clunky uh, holding a phone and trying to use a phone that has a big cord coming out of it uh, attached to the wall and it took me a while to find a place in the house that was convenient to just kind of leave the phone so I wasn't taking it with me everywhere but then I got used to it pretty quick you have multiple inlets here so you could put in ethernet you could also charge it at the same time that's super convenient because I'm someone who often leaves the house with my phone uh, barely charged at all having this plugged in all the time in the past week I haven't left my house once without a fully charged device so that's a nice unanticipated positive externality of this. This is far more reliable than Wi-Fi. I have been plagued with Wi-Fi issues. Anyone who's watched any of my live streams know this. This has been the most reliable internet connection I've ever had. And having my phone in one place connected to this ethernet cable meant that I actually checked it less often and that led to increased productivity. So another unintended consequence. If we're being honest about it, this is not much different to a charger. So if you're someone who has your phone sitting at home, plugged into a charger at all times, you should really consider getting one of these and just plugging it into ethernet instead and turning off your Wi-Fi altogether. For all of the enhanced privacy that it gives you, I would definitely recommend it. Let's finish up with some hot tips. Number one, never tether on your phone. That is something that I have learned through this rabbit hole research that I have been doing. As soon as you just turn on your hotspot, all the devices in range are going to log that, send that information back to Google and Wiggle. They're gonna put it all on their website, including your device name, your exact location, the time when that occurred. You do not want people to look through these very public databases and be able to find your exact location at any given time. It's just not worth it, guys. If you want to tether, 
use a USB tether, don't turn on your hotspot. Next tip, if you do need to have a Wi-Fi connection, realize that the SSID or the network name that you create could make it harder or easier for you to be found in these databases. If your name is Jane Smith, I would not recommend creating a wireless network name called Jane Smith Home Wi-Fi. Follow up from that, if you do need to create a Wi-Fi network, you can actually request that Google and Wiggle not list your SSID on their website. Now there are details for exactly how to do that in the description below. So hopefully this has been a little bit helpful in explaining why you might choose to go with an ethernet hardwire connection rather than a Wi-Fi connection so that you can claim back some of your location data and give yourself just a little bit more privacy. Check out my links below for how to purchase these little adapters and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.